call the Maple Run Unified School District Board of Directors meeting for June 1st, 2022 to order at 6.05 p.m. First item on the agenda is agenda review. Any things, that, any changes that need to happen to the agenda as far as anyone knows? I don't think so. So we'll accept the agenda as it is. Please stand and join me for a pledge of allegiance to the flag, which is over there, sort of around the corner. Okay. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. All right, uh, a couple of housekeeping things. Welcome to Leah, our uh, as our student representative. This is her first official meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for hosting Kelsey at Fairfield. This is one of our first meetings where everybody, almost everyone's here face to face, and I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of things, um, just to kind of review some sort of meeting etiquette. Um, <clears throat> it's been, you know, brought to my attention by a couple of people that there's been some crosstalk during meetings sometimes, and I'd like to just request that we try to keep the conversation focused on the topic at hand and, and you know raise your hand and get um, acknowledged before you speak so that we don't have any distractions apparently there's been some what has been deemed hurtful conversation in the sidebar so i want to just call attention to that and try to make sure that we can um eliminate that and just speak directly about the topics so that's the first thing um the second thing is we have visitors here, here, and then we have visitors on Zoom, I believe. John, do we know if anybody that is visiting wishes to speak? I'm just posted right now, so okay. no momentarily. All right, well, let me read the visitor section of this so that if we get some visitors, we'll know. Um, so the public comment visitor section of the meeting is an opportunity for community members to address issues of concern about policy, budget, or administrative matters, or to share ideas about how we can work together to improve our schools. We value input and respect divergent views. We ask you to limit your remarks to time constraints prescribed by the chair, which will be two minutes per topic, and refrain from airing grievances with individual members of the school community including respecting the privacy of the students and parents. Those attending remotely may type their name, their full name in the comment section along with their city or town of residence and if they wish to speak. And um, during the meeting, the comment section is typically disabled. So we're in, the, we're in the visitor section right now. And John, have you received any? I have uh, Dr. Jen Williamson from St. Albans Town. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, and Jeffrey Nelson from Fayetteville. Okay. Anybody in this room wish to speak? Are you Are you James? Yes. Okay. Um, we're going to uh, address the people on remote, James, and then we'll uh, address the people in the room. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Williamson, you're on. Hi there. Um, so I'm Dr. Jen Williamson. I live in St. Albans Town, and I just wanted to say thank you so much. Uh, my, I'm just totally overcome today about seeing the Black Lives Matter flag be raised. I'm just so excited to know that Black kids at our schools are going to feel welcome. Um, and appreciate it and know that their lives matter. So uh, I couldn't be happier uh, that this happened today. And it's just, it's just absolutely amazing. And I want to just really, you know, give a big shout out to the students who did all the work, um, the board members who obviously, you know, made it all happen, administration, everybody. It just, it's so exciting to know that we have some representation at every one of our schools letting the community know that the lives of black people matter in St. Albans. 
um, and I just I'm so excited. So, um, yeah. Uh, the other thing is, I just wanted to um, also thank you for your decision uh, last year, whenever that was. Yeah, it was last year uh, about the SROs. You know, the the terrible tragedy of the massacre in Uvalde, Texas. Um, I'm sure it has a bunch of people very riled up um, and and probably asking for SRO return. But as we saw there in Texas, as we saw in Parkland, Florida, the SRO really did not save any lives at all. So um, I just want you to know that I, um, you know, I, I acknowledge that those people are probably going to come out um, and say stuff to you and just, you know, the same things that I said for a year and a half, that, you know, are still true that the SROs cause more harm than good and I'm so glad uh, that they're not around um, and I thank you for making that decision in the past. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you do. I'm so appreciative of all of your hard work uh, at board. So great job. Thank you. Uh, Jeffrey Nelson, is that correct? Mr. Nelson? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Not anymore. Uh, uh, I would just like to also uh, echo the uh, subsequent. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. We could hear you, then we stopped hearing you, then we could hear you, and now we stopped again. Can you hear me now? Yes. <clears throat> yes, sir. Can you hear me now? You might want to shut off your video. Have everybody shut off the video. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. sir. Yes. I would just like to uh, echo both sentiments. Uh, I also uh, value the uh, Black Lives Matter uh, flag, flag being raised on all the properties. And I think it's a great, um, you know, it, it serves as a great uh, uh, emblem of, of the school's commitment. I also think that uh, those of us that are the trained as educators uh, know the uh, value that uh, we have take uh, their own agency, and learners take their own agency and their own education, and uh, how, how much of an incense uh, students to participate, and, uh, and the way that any adults or any other person in society, uh, and it gets involved, it gets invested in their community, and uh, that just really pays dividends. Uh, and uh, I'm really, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I feel very special and very particular um, I am from Fairfield, but that's not, you know, that's not the reason I, I do feel ownership in um, St. Albert School in general, of course. But it's just a, it's a real point of pride, and I really want to thank you for uh, the strength of the students and the, uh, the faculty and the other people who uh, were responsible for it, um, for their year of efforts um, in, uh, in managing that. And I do appreciate uh, the reference as well as the board. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on a uh, remote, John? Uh, nobody else that stated their name yet. Okay. Mr. Cross? Hi, everybody. So I just want to say off the bat, I'm going to be a little bit longer than two minutes. But I find it. I don't know if we can. How many, to how many topics are you talking about? One topic. I find it intricate. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't important. I could, I could not, I didn't really want to come to Fairfield tonight, to be honest, but it's that important to me that I feel that it's due the time that it takes. So let me get to it. Uh, I'm James Cross. Um, I'm a 31 year old single father. That's my daughter, Camilla. I grew up here in St. Albans. I graduated from St. Albans Town School and I graduated from BFA in class of 2009. During, if not the majority of my time in school, I was the only black American from St. Albans. 
And I would like to take the time before I begin and just say thank you for listening to me and the gratitude for allowing me here to speak here tonight. I'm incredibly grateful, and even though the reason I am here is, is an is a incredibly serious and potentially uncomfortable topic to discuss, I still firmly believe you cannot, I still firmly believe you deserve to treat people with respect even though we may disagree. I am here before you reading this well simply because I'm losing faith that our education system is focused on education and making common sense factual based decisions regarding every child including my own. And due to the fact that this past Friday I received an email from the Maple Run School District stating that there will be a raising of a political representing flag upon school grounds. I cannot express with enough vigor and passion to adequately explain why this is a tremendous mistake and why when you think about it from a black American's perspective actually raised here it is absolutely detriment to the character and the potential, potential morality of the children we're trying to raise. By sending the message that black American history is something separate from American history, history alone sends the message of separate and divide. You may be asking yourself why, how can a flag hold so much influence? How does it affect our children's mentality and thought process? I can only express from my personal experience and my thoughts that our school has to be a strict, neutral, political, free environment so that learning and education can flourish and be the absolute focal point of every school, teacher, administrator, and board member in this state and hopefully the nation. I myself graduated from BFA in 2009. I was raised here in St. Albans after I was adopted at the age of four. I know what it feels like as an American who knows what it's like to grow up within this community, to make mistakes within this acute community. As an American who happens to be of color, I know what it feels like to be the only who is of black American descent in a classroom full of people of Caucasian descent or passes so. I know how it feels to be told and believe slavery, Underground Railroad, Reverend Martin Luther King, Jim Crow, Rosa Parks, civil rights are the only points of black history, American history, worth teaching accurately. And embracing, and, and lack of embracing the different perspectives in all of us, that, of all of us that make America. American history involved people who happen to be of color, Irish, and so many more. And it all needs to be taught, but instead, I was taught, and it's still, it is still being taught, that because I am black, my history is something separate, and it's not quite American. Because, well, you know, horrible things happen. Slavery, Jim Crow, segregation, redlining. Certain American history is singled out, making it, making it a separate entity from American history. That alone is essential and contributes to the current state of race relations within this whole country. Watch the news for proof of what I'm saying. If an alien came down from Mars and was on Earth for one day, they would go back thinking that black people can't vote, well, you know, because we don't have the means or the smarts to have IDs. If you believe that you really need to re-educate, because they don't have the smarts to do so. If you believe that, then you really need to re-educate because it's absolutely absurd, especially when pretty much everything essential to life requires one. Expecting so little of me because of color, that's the example of racism. Frankly, I am sick of being told and having my daughter be told what she can't do because of color. For once, I would like to be told what I can do for character. Flying a political flag specifically affects and puts a light upon my child and every child, but my child specifically who happens to be half white and black American. And personally, I believe it's stealing this, a sense of innocence from all of our children by bringing attention to adult issues that adults can't even figure out. 
and expecting school-aged children to be mature enough, well-educated enough, well-informed enough to make decisions of, of the magnitude as the one I am speaking about today. Do we really need to fly a flag as a reminder to yourselves and others that we need to take the extra measure to ensure that me, that you see me as a human being, and my life somehow matters more because you fly a flag? So, Mr. Krasik, you're up to six minutes. Okay. I'm almost done. Is the board okay with letting him finish this off? Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sorry, I need to lose your place. Um, <clears throat> do we really need to fly a flag as a reminder to ourselves and others that we somehow need to take the extra measure to ensure that you see me as a human being and my life somehow matters more because flying a school flag that is a divisive flag creating created by hate-filled Marxists. Those who look like me really, those who look like me really that different? Do we need that reminder? Am I not worthy of humanity? Does the school board find this essential to my child's education by teaching that she is somehow disadvantaged due to the circumstances, unfortunate circumstances that I am her father? Personally, I believe the school's role is simply to teach education not teaching my child about political issues, social issues, gender issues, and so on and so forth. I know my focus, I know maybe we should be focused on math, history, revamping the hi history curriculum, curriculum, to be accountable. With the lack of accurate history in the curriculum for our children, it is contributing to the very reason the school feels that necessity a uh, necessity to fly a political flag and go as far to ensure saying within the email I received, and I'm paraphrasing, but it stated something along the lines of that we do not take any political stance or anything that might be viewed in a negative way due to the specific political political or organizations present and past actions. For example, the rioting that took too many lives too many businesses, too many homes, and created too many destruction in communities they claim they care for. The burning and eluding of small businesses and stores, we all saw it. The violence perpetuated upon innocent civilians with the demands of toning for white privilege, apologize or else. Their demands for abolition of the police while surrounded by private security and the numerous acts of hypocritical disregard and utter contempt for everything American. As, I, as they stand on the very Constitution that ensures their right to do the very thing they're doing. I find it completely flabbergasting that I have to take the time to explain to the school district that should be more informed and educated than I, the parent, that safe schools, that black parents, black Americans care about the same thing that all Americans care about. Safe schools, good curriculum, not social activism or political views. And I end it there. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Is that it? Now that we have a few more people who have uh, indicated they'd like to speak, the first one is uh, Lauren D. Erickson, and the second is uh, Zach S. Lauren Erickson, and the second one is who, please? Zach S. Okay. Lauren? Hello. Yep, yep. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. All right, so my name is Lauren Dees Erickson and I hadn't planned on giving a statement, um, but I was called to after listening to some of the statements that were mentioned. So the beauty of the black American experience is that we are all allowed to have differing views. For me, as a black American, a homeowner, a taxpayer with two school age children, I believe that supporting students and education provides students with agency. I support students and the board's decision to raise the Black Lives Matter flag, a flag that recognizes that Black lives matter. Thank you. Thanks, Lauren. Zach? Hi, all. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Thank you all for um, allowing for the public uh, comment this period. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to add and follow up 
uh, and agree with what Lauren said and echo that. Um, you know, the space is a, is a place for discourse, but at the end of the day, um, Black Lives Matter, and I am in deep support, deep and full support of, of flying the flag here uh, at, uh, on school grounds. Um, as a personal note, I would just like to say that I am so overwhelmingly filled with joy um, hearing folks ask and, and, and wonder, um, will the next generation of students step up, get involved in their communities and uh, bring issues that, that they're seeking questions and seeking answers about uh, to, you know, to, to us, uh, to you as, as a student uh, or as a school uh, organizing body. And in this question, yes, the answer is undeniably yes, that um, these students, this was led by students, this was started by students, and this is something that for over a year, students have wanted, students have sought, and uh, I just want to applaud uh, the students, the faculty, the staff, and y'all for, um, for making this decision, for making this happen, um, that it originated from students in the student community and that this was made possible by kids who wanted to get involved in their communities. I think that's a beautiful thing. I think it comes from empathy for others. Uh, and it comes from a place where, you know, these students wanna live in a better world in tomorrow. They wanna make a better world tomorrow. And, and I think that's really important. And I think centering that is, is key in this whole discussion. So above all else, um, I again, hadn't planned on speaking as well, but. Thank you so much for hearing me out. Thank you. <clears throat> well, we have uh, another speaker, John Nichols. Hello. John, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to say, um, <clears throat> my name is John Nichols, uh, resident of uh, the city. Apologies for the dog barking. Um, I had the privilege of being in a, uh, a Maple Run uh, school classroom today uh, when they raised the uh, Black Lives Matter flag. And I had the privilege of witnessing um, the support uh, that the students in that classroom expressed uh, for raising that flag. And it was, it was a, a really um, a positive experience uh, for me and the students in that classroom. And I just wanted to, uh, to share that and say thank you. Nobody else at this time. Anyone else in the room? Can I ask one more question? You want to ask a question? Yes. Sure. What is the child that is not Black supposed to think when they read Black Lives Matter about the value of their life or anyone else's? Thank you for the question. We'll take it under consideration and get back to you. Thank you. We do have an additional speaker with us, if that's okay. Okay. Uh, Sarah Pearl. Sarah Pearl. Hi, can you hear me okay? Uh, hi, Sarah. Hi, Nilda. Um, I would just like to say thank you, um, and I would just like to join in the voices of support for raising the Black Lives Matter flag. Um, my daughter is going to be starting pre-K, and I'm very excited that she's going to be attending a school um, where the students led the change and those flags were raised. Um, I went to city school. I went to BFA. I'll be honest, when I was there, I'm not sure that this would have happened. So I'm really, really proud and excited um, that that change is happening, and I'm really proud that it was student-led. So thank you, um, and I'm very excited that my daughter is going to get to attend a school with that where that flag is, is raised. So thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Anyone else? <clears throat> I think we're gonna close our visitor section and um, move on with our agenda. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. There are two items on that. There are minutes and a media packet. Does anyone have any reason to pull anything out of the consent agenda? Hearing none, we'll accept the consent agenda as submitted. Next item is reports to the board. We have a couple of uh, reports. The first report is on student attendance. You have a copy of that in your packet, and I am going to 
turn it over to Bill to explain the report to us and give us the highlights as he deems fit. Okay, did you intentionally switch it from audit, the audit of the reports to the student report? I can do it, I don't mind switching. Do the that it does there, and it's on my agenda the other way. Oh, well, either way. Okay. Like I said. Um, so uh, the board has asked me at times to make sure we keep you informed of even when things are tough for us right now. So this report of the, uh, uh, one of our things that we've been talking about, one of the topics we've been talking about in the leadership team meeting is, oh, I'm just going to give you a yes, yep, okay. Um, is our student engagement. As you've all heard through COVID, through many COVID reports, it's been in the media is about students engaging in school and how COVID has impacted that. So I wanted to bring you actual data. This is across Maple Run. And I wanna explain this table first before we talk about a little bit more. But if you see, the way this table is working is that 60% of the students have an absence have greater than 10 days absence. So if they have greater than 30 days absence, they're counted within that 60%. So 60% of our student body has at least 10 days of absences. That's, and then as you can see in the next column over, we have been coding for if we know it's a co an absence due to COVID, that comes down to 45%, have greater than 10 days absence. If we go to the down to 20 days, great, 20 days or greater than absence, we dropped to tw almost 30%, including COVID, and almost 21% without COVID. One of the things that we've been talking about a lot as a leadership team is that this is probably our number one area for next year of work. I do want to preview with you that we are talking about different attendance policies and different ways of working with families. And as you know, through the ESSER work, and we haven't given you a report this spring on ESSER, but one of the things we've been adjusting is trying to have more homeschool coordinators, social workers, and uh, we're also gonna be needing more attendance monitors to help with this. And it's, it's, unfortunately, one of the things I could say from talking to a couple of students and talking with my colleagues is that through COVID, especially the spring in that March to uh, end of June time, students learned that they could not necessarily be at class to get their academics done. And that's one of the things that we did learn. You've all heard about turning off the camera. I'm sure I haven't said it to you, but I'm sure you've all heard about that. So we're trying to figure that out. And that's some of that's working with students to figure out how can we make it more engaging for you. Um, but we have an attendance problem. We're not the only one. I mean, this is not just a Maple Run problem. What we're trying to do, there's a group of us superintendents here in Franklin County that we're trying to compare our attendance across our school districts. Looking at MVU right now, because that's the only one I've seen, is we're in the same range as MVU right now. Um, the other districts haven't submitted all their attendance data. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do, which sounds like it should be, but it's not. Um, and Julie Regenbald, the superintendent in Missisquoi Valley has one of her data people trying to pull this all together for us. Because I wanted to bring you a report of other districts to say, is Maple Run an anomaly? But what I hear from my colleague superintendents, we're not. But I do, I do want to alert you. And, you know, this is a problem that we're trying to tackle. I'm not going to say we have every answer. We're putting more people to the resources for it, to support it. But really, once we get reestablishing some of our attendance policies and procedures, I shouldn't say policy, but procedures and protocols, um, it's then gonna be working individually with families and students. <clears throat> and so that's gonna be a long process. This is not an overnight fix coming down. Have you, um, I I'm not saying you're showing it here, but have you looked at last year's data and then pre-COVID data just in terms of timing, just so you could get some kind of- yeah. Pre-COVID, it's very, it's it's much less. We know that. Uh, I didn't look at last year so much. Um, I was just wondering if there's an improvement from last year to now. No, I actually think it's the other way around. You think it's worse? Yeah, I, I know from talking with my colleagues on the leadership team, it's much worse this year. And so, um, mine is kind of the same question, but if we take the numbers in the far right-hand column, how does that compare to prior to like 2020? 
Oh, we're much higher. Are those on the right, are those including people who had to be out because they were close contacts? And this is, if we had anything that was coded to, we have a code. No, I know, but in the beginning. So I can't, I don't have the ability to tell you that because no. I have to go by what the codes are in the system. Gotcha. And we put in, although we put in an additional code that we can't report to the state if we knew something for COVID reasons. Okay. We had to follow the attendance codes for the state of Vermont. It was an additional one just so we knew, we wanted to know for ourselves if someone was out for COVID. But we can't, we just have to report that as an absence. So in relation to what Katie asked, like there were a couple of days where like my kids were like, oh, like they're a little sick. Yeah. I'm not going to send them to school. But I didn't necessarily call in and say they have COVID or right. I think they have COVID. It was just like, I think they're sick or whatever. So Ryan, that's one of the new places that we're all living in right now. And I'm glad you brought that up because I meant to say that at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I, Kelsey, I'm going to use you a little bit since you're here tonight. And for, Kelsey and I've had this conversation, and you've had it. I've had it in my family. I think you don't mind me sharing. You've had it in your family. Your child has the sniffles. We're staying home. Where I know I can say for myself as a parent, pre 2020, you have the sniffles. <laughs> you're going to school. You know, so there's a different expectation on the health piece too. So it's hard to really compare. It's really apples and oranges pre-COVID to post-COVID because we're all being so vigilant. So there's another part of this. So when we think about our procedures and protocols, how tight can we get because of what we're all, we're re-changing to a new norm of how we define sick for school. I don't think we're gonna, that's why, I, as I said there at the end of my introduction to this, this is a long, there's a long solution to this. There's not an overnight one, but I want you to be aware of it as board members. If people say, well, Mike, I hear there's not a lot of kids in school. Well, yeah, that's, and that's, I think that's going to happen again next year. Yeah. Now, you see resources you are going to put the next year, what, like hiring new resources? Yeah, oh. hiring. Okay. We're using ESSER funds. Okay. So this is specifically what they were there like for. Like how right? many resources? I don't have the answer for you on that either okay. right now. No, just kidding. Okay. Yeah. It, 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 at a later date, John can talk about how we've repositioned our ESSER funds. Okay. Any other questions related to the student attendance rates report? Um, do you think, so you just brought up the, you know, the fact, because I, I feel this um, also, I feel like there needs to be more education done um, with families on a whole in terms of what is, and staff for that matter, what is acceptable to come to, to, to school with, right? Um, so I just, I, I wonder, I'm really surprised that you're seeing more now than last spring. That's really interesting. Because we remember last spring, it was mainly our, in May, our seventh and eighth graders came back to four days. We didn't have, this is, we're back to five days yeah. right now. And we had all the way until throughout the year for the high school, it was two days virtual, two days right. on site. <clears throat> and we had, everyone had an experience of that all the way down to kindergarten. Mm -hmm. We brought our K-3s, I believe, back first. Um, and then we brought, you know, we, we staggered right. that as we came back. And I think, and I think that has a time for us to ask, not, not to answer <clears throat> right now, but to ask, should we be thinking about a different way of having school during the week? I don't know the answer to that. You know, is it, you know, is a four day, in some places, pre-COVID, there were some places in the nation where four-day school weeks was the norm, you know? So I'm not saying that's the way we should go, but those are questions we should be asking ourselves yeah. because we need to get kids back in school. We need to have kids, kids need to be collaborating with each other. They need to be learning together. They need to have the access to the resources that they have at school. We all know, we've all experienced, we do it in meetings. I mean, tonight's a a celebration we have almost the whole board here and that'll make it to me personally my bias that'll make a better meeting than it would be online and the same is true in the classroom and i hear that from my colleagues um, all the time um bill i have a question um so i don't have any kids in the school anymore but i have colleagues and co-workers that do and one of the things that i've heard at least in totally is that people are saying you know well I'm, I'm pulling my kids from school thursday and friday because we have the opportunity to do xyz 
as a family and we're gonna do that because we've been so hampered with the whole COVID thing. And, you know, so people are randomly, and I say random, I mean, it's for family time, but people are doing that. And I think they're doing that more probably now than maybe a, two, three years ago. I don't so, have it. I, I, it's anecdotal. Yeah, anecdotally, I, I don't have anything to say one way or the other on that. Mm -hmm. um, I think people's, I know my, I'm gonna say it this way, my values have changed as a result of going through COVID. Mm -hmm. And I think we hear that that's happening to everyone. Yeah. And I think that that's part of what will be, that's getting to what the quote unquote new normal is. Right. And yeah, I, I think as we talk about goals for the school district, those are. <clears throat> right, right. Well, we're not so driven by the things that used to drive the schools, right? Like the farmer and the crops and all that that required certain times when the family had to be home to help with all that. And, you know. Also, I just say, you know, my my son did it the uh, not the other day, but like a month or so ago. He was like, I just need a mental health day, and I was like, I mean, <laughs> all right, man, it's, <laughs> you can recognize that that's what you need as a first grader. Let's let's make it happen and put him some books and let him do his thing. So, to be honest, I was the one who's like, "No, you're going to school," and my wife was like, "No, he's let him have a mental health day." But uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I I think we our people have advanced. We're like our kids are so much more advanced. I think coming on the other side of this, that they just have they're just better able to like. To tell us what they need. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's been a good thing, but I do think there's been certain things that have come out of it that have really advanced us. And Briar, I'd have to join as a father saying the same thing. Yeah. I, I guess I'd also want to, as an educator, be aware that some kids actually learn better at home. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about home learning is I think that's the jobs of the future. Look how many people work at home. So I think there's something to be said for recognizing the different modalities that some kids learn better in. And Peter, I would let you know that we do have some students that this year, because of what we learned from last year, we're doing that. Hmm. I, I think I think that important that we recognize that because at home during COVID, it's a hor it was a horrible thing, but it's not necessarily so. I think that for some kids, that's the way they learn better, and they don't learn better. In fact, sometimes they disrupt regular educational system of some students because they're so bored when they're sitting there. Thank you. Any Thank other you. questions, comments related to the uh, student attendance report? All right, so I guess we as a board accept this report and look forward to any future information. Yeah. Um, so apparently your your um, agenda is look at these in a different uh, order, but the next item is the audit of reports so we have uh, a list of their um reports that we have given been given and bill you're going to take us through yeah so bill and i were talking i think after the last board meeting or within the past month about reports and there were some and this started from a discussion of the board asking for some additional reports and I thought it would be a really good idea before we started to look at additional reports. We had put together a plan last fall on the retreat and I brought it to a board meeting in the beginning of October and asked the board, are these the reports? Because our work with Mike Deweese at the time was they ta he suggested the board and you took the suggestion to task me with to develop a plan of reports for the year. And this kind of goes along where uh, Phil Gore was talking about a, a governance calendar. So this is this was our first attempt at it this year. Mm -hmm. And I thought it'd be good for us to avoid, I mean, we should always reflect back and say, how did we do? Mm -hmm. So I went through and anything that's in red, I think you I mean, you guys are, you pick up on these things real quick, were the ones that weren't done. And then some of them, and I, there were reports that weren't just from myself. If you look like the governance update, the governance committee that uh, Nina was the chair of that subcommittee, gave reports all those times. It wasn't myself doing it, so I just listed all the times. So I went through all the agendas, looked when all the reports were given, and just gave you a report back on that, and then said, okay, here's, you can see there's five red ones right now, uh, but that we had planned, that we didn't get to, and then the rest of them are, are there. So I, I mean, my first comment would be job well done. I think we got a lot of what we had planned to do done and, and for me as your superintendent it helps me a lot to know the plans 
in advance because I can work with my colleagues on the leadership team to give input and build those reports in a planful way. So would it, would it be your expectation that we would recycle this for the next year or look at it at the next retreat? I think in the next we retreat, we need to look at this. We need to look at some conversation around uh, what do we need to do for our, what's our work plan for the year? Because I'm hoping version 2.0 of this is not just a report plan, but what's the work the board's doing for the year? And what are the pieces of information you need? It might not be a report, but we need, we're going into negotiations, so we'd like some economic conditions pieces. Yeah. You know, I'm just picking something that, you know, that usually starts out to October. So I think that's something we could, and I don't mind as we prepare for the retreat to put something down so you have something to speak to instead of a blank piece of paper. Okay. Thank you. Any questions related to the audit of reports? All right, thank you. Moving on to item seven, old business. Um, first item A is policy A21. It's the public participation at board meetings. You all have a copy of this policy <coughs> before you. It's up tonight for discussion only, I believe. And um, we did have, um, just for the record, we did have a training session between five and six today to look at um, discussing public participation at board meeting. Um, so I guess I'd like to, we don't need a motion because we don't have any action, so we're just discussing. So I'd like to open the discussion. Who would like to uh, start, or does somebody want to intro? Bill, do we need to fill in on this, Bill? Or what, I, what I would suggest is you were, at the training, you were working with Phil Gore, who's here, from, who's in attendance with the Vermont School Board Association, right. and he helped us work through learning about and discussing about just understanding the policy you have in front of you and looking at VSBA's model policy and his experience supporting boards with public participation. And we started to quickly, and I know it's been about 25, 30 minutes, but we, uh, or even longer, but we, uh, we, you started to get into places of places you might like to see changes or can start to think about changes. So I think this is the time now in public meeting to, so the public can is well informed about what you're thinking about for here. So you may restate some things that were stated earlier. I, I think, Phil, you said you were open to questions if they had more that came that weren't before. Um, and so I think I just I just say that to help you get back in your discussion and have a minute to kind of think about where did I leave off? I had an idea. Uh, one of the things I picked up on is that, that uh, we might consider how up to date this policy is if the school boards association has a more recent policy to get that and compare the two and see uh, if we want to uh, you know change this policy and look at the items in the uh, 2020 version since this is the 2016 version you know, that's maybe a starting place. And um, and I think Grant brought up the fact that um, the other policy, um, he liked the, uh, the outline of the policy better because it had uh, like two different sections. Yeah. Uh, it itemizes out. Um, the public comment on agenda items and the public input on items not on the agenda. That's what he was saying. Right, right. And, and that might be a good idea. That's an example of how looking at the, the more recent version might improve what we have. So that would be my comment. Thank you. What do you think, Phil? Do um, you think? Yeah, that, that was uh, the one main point was the, the new model policy delineating the difference between comment on a public on a, an agenda item versus just general input. Thank you. Any, any other discussion? 
I like the idea that was brought up with the concept that participation might be telling them that they're going to get more than what they're actually going to get. So possibly defining it or changing it to comments, public comments at board meetings, participation might imply greater taking part than what it actually is. And I don't know how it is in the state, what that says. I don't have a copy of that in front of me. Do they use the word participation? They do. The model policy they has do. the word participation yeah. as well. That, that really is suggestive that, that yeah. you're a participant. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think the other thing we talked about, which might, might be incorporated in a policy, is that we listen to the public comment, but we assure the person or the group uh, that we're going to discuss it as a board. It would be inappropriate for individual board members to get in discussion because it's just that individual board member's opinion. But if later the board discusses that issue amongst ourselves and come up with a, uh, a consensus of some kind of response and um, uh, direct the superintendent to you know, create a response and actually inform the person or group that we are going to get back to you. So that it isn't like the board, the board is just silently li you know, listening and not responding. So the anticipation of, of a response is, is probably important. I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else got any comments? Okay. I wanted to add um, just different ways. Uh, Phil was um, starting to generate some ideas for different ways that um, the public can participate, not necessarily just at a board meeting, but like uh, pressing a button and clicking on a website, um, or just finding other ways for uh, community members to provide input other than just at a board meeting. So I think that would be good for us to, and that was one of the questions that I had, you know, what are other ways that people could participate other than being at a, at a meeting, physically at a meeting, or virtually at a meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, yes, I also was wondering about maybe um, allowing time at the end of meetings for public comment. I think just because, like we saw today, someone like something might bring up a question someone has, a comment someone has, and so at the at the end of the meeting, it gives them a chance to say, "You talked about this, and I want to know about this," or you said something about this and I'd really like to know more, or I feel this way about a topic that came up and I didn't know it was gonna be on the agenda. So I do think like that tends to help people, you know, give them a chance to weigh in a little bit more and maybe it gives us a chance to think about things in a way we hadn't before. So I do wonder if that's something we can incorporate as well. We don't have any restrictions against doing that, right? We don't have any restrictions. Um, I might ask Phil for some help. I'm thinking of uh, Flora Diaz Smith did a nice presentation to the board chair, superintendent training, of how they've kind of revamped their public comment piece um, in Washington Central. I heard her talk to us about that. And I don't remember exactly what she did, so I don't really want to comment on it, but it was something prior to, there was a way of how do we wrap it up in a piece. So I think I'd want to see if Phil could help us if there was a board that was doing that to have a discussion first and what they found with it before we say, oh, let's just try this experiment. Sure. Let's we'd, let's use our Vermont Superintendents Association to help us. Yeah. Let me see what I can find out about that and get back with you on what their practice may be. And, and I might have the wrong school district. It may be someone else. But that was doing, I heard someone in that superintendent's training right. chair saying they were doing something at the end with public comment. So would it be an example that's in practice today? That's what I'm saying. Let's see if we can find yeah, out that's what I'm wondering. and then maybe that's invite okay. one of the board members to join us via Zoom. Say, just say, just tell us what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. okay, thank you. Because yeah. there's a delicate piece to this, right? Because if you have an action item and you take an action and then you open it up for comment and suddenly you've got comment here and the board member's like, you know, that's that's my that's my that's my concern. And, and how, you well, know. I'm sorry. Can you reiterate your concern? <clears throat> sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't get that. 
So if there's an action item on the agenda, mm -hmm. and then at the end of the meeting, you have a, a time for more public comment. What if the public is commenting on something that the action has already taken place that causes that a potential dilemma for the board members? So I can answer that because I sit on a number of different boards that do have two public yeah. comment. Yeah. And at the beginning, the one at the beginning is on agenda items, and the one at the end, or sorry, swap that. The one. I have to think. Uh, um, the one at the beginning is um, about um, non-agenda items, and the one at or, sorry, the other way. Yeah, the yeah, one at the beginning is about agenda items, and the one at the end is about maybe right. non-agenda items. Right. But then it does kind of. Right. I mean, it gives people point. an opportunity to be heard, but not. Not. I think you open, and it can open up other things that we're not That's ready to thing. talk about. Yeah. yeah. So let, let's just see if we have a. a let's. let's no, I'm curious. Yeah, yeah, see if someone's done it and what they got it. Right. I do like this, um, the updated one from 2020. It talks about what you were just talking about, agenda items to begin with, mm -hmm. and then comment at the end. Now, when I was looking at this and thinking about it, like I think about, okay, so how would this, with the discussion that we had tonight about the, the flag, how would this apply? Meaning it's a decision that's already been made. We're getting public comment on it you know, afterwards, would that have come in? Because I don't think we, we had no business action item on the flag policy tonight. We have, we have. We, we, did. Did. Well, we, 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 we do, do actually, we right? Do, yeah, we do request. Do so that could be a request. Either place, I suppose. Yeah. I guess another thing too, though, is that if we're only doing it in sections, the first one is one and the second one is another, if, you know, people who have school age kids are putting them to bed. They're doing like all this other stuff. I think we're really limiting our audience again. Um, I mean, it could work. I'm just saying that's just another potential, um, which is, I think, another thing of maybe giving the 10 minutes in case nobody talks in the beginning. You have 10 minutes to come. You have 10 minutes to yeah. get it right. And then if, if you aren't able to make the meeting, then you can still send an email to the superintendent. You can, you know, do other things. But other forms so we feel correct yeah mm -hmm. thanks Katie. well let's sure. let bill do some research on yeah. on that part and if you find somebody that's doing it and it's working um, <laughs> find out how, how they're making it happen and then um as far as making edits to this policy would this be something that we turn this over to you and say take the commentary that you've heard and come up with a new version or uh, should we handle that? Should we I'd be glad to try to draft what I've heard from the discussion tonight. Or a subcommittee? I mean, what do you I, let's, let's try a draft for before we okay. go get, get it. Unless there's a real desire for a group of people. But if, um, or. Don't you have to change the you know. No, we'd have to give you a draft of a policy and we'd have to go into policy, you know, to. We'd have to do a first reading. First reading, second reading, third reading, all that. Right. Um. I know we probably have access to this, but could you email us the current up-to-date version of this policy that is right here? I can do that. From VSBA? From VSBA. From VSBA. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We've given that the past couple boards, but I can do it again. You gave me the VSBA? We did in a, in a packet two or three meetings ago when we started. I want to say it was April. Okay. I consider myself delinquent on that, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Elena. All right. Can we move on then? Neil, yeah, just one last thing. I want to yes, compliment you on the way you handled Mr. Cross with having a little leeway. I thought that was very, very well done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Just for the record, he did email me and ask me when the next board meeting was today, and I sent him an email back saying, unfortunately, it's tonight at in Fairfield, and so I felt badly because I didn't give him much lead time to show up. Okay, we're on um, old business 7B, student representatives to the board policy. So this is a second reading, so we really don't have this policy officially approved yet. No, you don't have it officially approved. So you're... Unofficially sitting at the table there. Yes. Uh, which <laughs> I think Sorry, this board Jesus. invited her back in April yes. to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you'll be official at some point real soon. <laughs> so I need a motion to, 
well, you know, we're talking about this process, right? I need a motion to move this policy to approval status. Is that how we're going to do it? Yeah. Please. Move to approve. So move. Thanks, Ryder. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Jack. Sorry. Go ahead. You have a question? Can I ask a quick question about the policy? Yeah. Okay, so I'm a little confused. Yeah. And I don't know if I wasn't here last time, but um, so there's going to be five student representatives? Leo, you're Leo, Leo yeah. is, is. There's. We were thinking of having five student representation at all times on the actual board, while there would be um, like a few more on the actual committee, but always having five in rotation, um, mainly juniors and seniors. So, in, would there be five people here, or just one that rotates through? We one would, of the five would rotate. We were thinking having two or three students show up each time, and having those be rotating in case like I couldn't make it or another student couldn't come, and also allowing it to have those five students so you can have different perspectives, so it's not just like me all the way up through, um, to have a different perspective. And then as it rotates through and juniors become seniors and then sophomores become juniors, you can get that um, rotation as well. So, okay, thank yes. you. so five in the actual group, but rotating two or three. Okay, thanks Leo. So is the idea that they'll, all five are always welcome to attend, but like probably one or two will be yes, out for whatever. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> can, we, can you just talk a little bit, I think you did last meeting, but it'd be good just to remind the board about what you do on the off Wednesday morning, you know, when yeah, I once in a while show up and you're always there. So Wednesday mornings during a, a long walk Can you speak up just a little bit? Yep. Um, Wednesday mornings during long block enrichments, um, the subcommittee, or not subcommittee, but the principal's committee that I am on with the other students, we kind of, we meet and I have been kind of rehashing what's happened and kind of letting them know um, what's going on. Um, and we are being able to talk about that. Um, so that would also follow next year. Um, the students that would come and be attend the meeting would then go back to the students that maybe couldn't attend and let them know and see what their perspectives are as well. Um, that being said, other students that maybe aren't rotating through, like sophomores or freshmen that are just on the principals committee will also get um, to know what's going on and kind of have an inside look. Can we talk about, I think we talked about it anyways, uh, at one time having representation from each of the schools as well. Yes. And it, wasn't, it wouldn't just be uh, comprised of BFA students, yes. but also um, representation from, you know, Fairfield, um, Sachs, and SATEC. Yeah, we um, definitely, that's a big priority of getting, talking to their student councils um, or just groups of students that are willing to talk. Um, personally, um, I know a couple of the students that are in the committee um, go to like SACS and um, SATEC to, um, with the tech center. So we get to see the students anyways, um, and that we can have some conversations with them. Um, next year I am going to be in the tech center and would love to kind of have those conversations with the students, but um, as well as maybe starting a student council in each of the middle schools um, and getting to really see and talk to those students is a big priority because we are representing or we should be representing the entire grades and not just high school. And so if I think that would be part of your work is what you're yes. saying as a five or five person member that you could be the liaison yes. to the other schools. Exactly. Right. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. And I know that Leah's talked to uh, the different, uh, to the pre-K-8 principals about this mm -hmm. and there's some logistics pieces and those have to get figured out. But yeah. Leah's been great about doing that and I in my weekly or by or two week meeting with the principals, they talked to me about it. And I said, I don't have anything preconceived myself. I want to follow the lead of the students at BFA, but they're they're genuine about wanting to do the press. Perfect. So do there's we, some things that we need to help support as administrators to make sure that can happen. Do the middle schools have school councils? Um, student councils? Yeah. Yeah. Used to forever. Yeah, so we just started back up our leadership. Okay. 
um, with COVID and not having, you know, crossing grades. We just started up, and it was also finding a staff member who was willing to do that. Okay. And so we just started up about a month ago. All right. I just assumed yeah. Yeah. the schools had a student council. That's, that's what I've been hearing is some have definitely had them, and then they've kind of fallen out. Um, and there, there, and there are other leadership models besides the student council. Yeah. Like, like how you put it, Leah, we're talking with groups of students who are willing to talk about yeah. these issues. I think that's a good way. Instead of thinking it's going to be a student council, it might mm -hmm. be something else. Because there are, we're starting to see in education different leadership models for getting student voice out that isn't a, a traditional student council. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Thanks. So we have the motion. We have a motion. Yeah, we have a motion in a second. Are we ready to vote on the motion? Alice yes. got a question. We got a question. Okay. Take your ball first. Oh, jeez. All right, Al. Um, <clears throat> all in favor of moving the student representative to the board policy for approval? Sorry, say say yeah. goodbye by saying aye. 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 Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> you all said aye. We didn't have to take a roll. Oh, shoot. We do have to take oh, a roll. I was going to say aye. Oh, oh, that was nice. No, I have one quick question before we vote. Can I just do that? Before the vote? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go. Okay, so in the policy, it says Bellas Free Academy High School students will be selected to serve as student reps. We can uh, modify this next year if we have. Middle school reps. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Al. We have to take a roll vote. That was my mistake. So, Al. Yes. Nina. Yes. Peter. Yes. Joanna. Yes. Katie. Yes. Jack. Yes. Ryer. Yes. Susan. Yes. Gilda votes yes. Thank you. Motion carried. Um. Next item is item 7C, COVID update. Bill Kimball. Yes. Before we get to that point. point yes, sir. Order. Yes. Let's see, two reasons we're going to have to leave. The TV. You okay? Yeah. Say that again, please. He's got to leave. He's got to leave. Yes. For health and safety reasons, I'm going to have to leave the TV. Okay. Will you be coming back, or are you going to be gone for? Uh, I'll be gone. Okay. Thank, thanks, Al, for giving us an update. Good night, Al. 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 Good night, John, can you take him off just for decency? All right. You're, you're clicking. I'm just giving it. Yeah, okay. So, um, COVID. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, COVID, co COVID update. Um, my update on COVID is, is a couple of things. We, uh, we've had, we've had COVID going up and down, increasing in cases, decreasing in cases. Um, we're, I think we're all seeing that in the community as well. Um, my biggest thing that's related to COVID, but not COVID, is just um, everyone is tired in the school system, and we're all counting days. And we just need to take a deep breath and try to make it to the end. And that I really want to thank uh, my administrative and teacher colleagues and paraprofessional support staff colleagues within Maple Run. Um, I understand them feeling uh, just for lack of better words, worn out. And uh, so we're trying to make it. And I applaud all of them for their hard efforts and what they're doing. So uh, I'd like, to, you know, if you see anyone that's part of the staff, just give them a pat on the back. We understand you're trying to do as much as you can, but uh, just people are tired. And that's where we're at. Thanks, Bill. Any questions for Bill related to COVID? Okay. Uh, 7D, Implicit Bias and Anti-Racism Training. Yes. Um, John Muldoon, myself, and Alexis Hoyt, even though she's on maternity leave, joined us in a Zoom call with uh, uh, the group that we hired 
Creative Discourse. Discourse. Thank you. Creative Discourse group. Um, and we met with them for our initial uh, kickoff meeting, have adjusted the timeline from what they proposed because the approval was later. The piece that we're working on is what we know trying to talk to teachers and students and parents right now, this is not a good time of year. So we're going to have those. We'll try to make those contacts, as you saw in the step one, was to start to make contact with having them do it to say, what are people's hopes and dreams of the work that we're going forward with the community conversations and how would people, what do people envision? Um, I did, one of the things I'm starting to do and they've asked me to do and asked us to work as a leadership team and I don't need it tonight. I don't need a brainstorm session from the board right now, but I'd like your input on any community groups you think that need to be contacted. One night, Ryer, I'm going to use our conversation a little bit if that's okay, but sure. Ryer's on the city belonging inclusion and equity. I might not have the order right there. Yeah. It's VEI, got right? the word there. Yeah, VEI. VEI uh, committee, and we talked about uh, the creative discourse group having a conversation with that committee. Um, I've talked about having a conversation with our social services partners and CSS, of course, but I think a spectrum, a few other that deal with student concerns um, and work with youth in the community. So I, like I said, I don't need a brainstorming session right now, but if you have an idea of a group that could talk to us about, um, get, that they can approach about equity issues that can give their hopes and dreams of what they'd want to see in the community. So then they could say, okay, how do we start developing a process? Because their new process, which was different than the previous one we had, was to have small reach out to small, to have reach out to small groups and then take that information and create a, a new design, a new committee to figure out how to have the community conversation. So um, I'm asking for your help. And for the parents, students, and staff, uh, that will all be happening next September. And then the real goal is to hit a community conversation somewhere in the winter next year, somewhere between January and March. Because after March, things just get tough for school districts. So, but we want to be purposeful and, and try to collect that information. Will we, so will, like, will they talk to us as a board? I'm not sure. I'm just curious. Like, if, if they could. It's as we try to design this piece. They have seven listening sessions, these small sessions they can have. That's what they contracted nope. for. When you get into these contracts, they have to yeah. put some numbers behind it for cost. <laughs> right. And then they have, they'll pull together a group to help design the conversation and then lead the conversation. At the same time, they're giving some support to the leadership team mm -hmm. for our own training. Mm -hmm. And then they're training three or four of us that are leaders. Uh, they were pretty direct to me. They said, Bill, you have to be one of these. And I said, I'm more than glad to learn. So. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, moving on. Uh, next item on the agenda is setting goals. On the, I think Grant was going to update us on the goal committee, but are there any members of the goal committee? Is anyone else prepared to do that, or should we table? I would suggest you table. We're trying to get a meeting date right now, and I for, frankly forgot to ask Aaron if we've gotten out. I don't think we've gotten out a group to survey on that. So. Okay. So we'll table that. Um, I guess I need a motion to table tonight. Yes, you do. Um, can I please have a motion to table the setting goals to a future meeting? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Jack. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion can signify by saying aye, please. Aye. Motion carries. Um, any um, nays or abstentions? Sorry. Thank you. Um, next item is uh, board retreat. This is a discussion. Um, I think we are looking at some dates, Bill, and I think you had some update information. Yep. On the lodge and kind of so we looked you had suggested that we use the that we use the hard act lodge you like that last time you asked either the third meeting in august or the first meeting in september the lodge is not available those days it's available the 24th of august or the 31st which are wednesdays um i would be glad to do either of those we could do either of those and then at a later date we can talk about 
the best possible facilitator. So the 24th and the 31st are our off, ways, our off from our... Like, yeah, you wouldn't have a meeting then, but it's a Wednesday, so that's why they're not. I would do the 31st. Yeah, I would do the 31st. And we had said that we were going to not have a meeting. We were going to have the first meeting of July and the... It's third uh, meeting of August. The so last we, meeting of August. Right. August. So this would be the week so after. This would be the week after. This would be two weeks after if we had it on 31st or a week after. Mm -hmm. So do we need to, can we confirm August 31st with this group here right now? Yeah. 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 I, I can't do the 31st. You can't do the 31st. Sorry. No one's having an operation. Oh, well, that's <laughs> fine. That's legit. Okay. I will be gone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to confirm. Um, but you don't, you don't, I mean, I could maybe join via Zoom, which I don't want to, but if it works for everybody else, do it. What is, is that well, the first day of school? Well, I to do that, though. I mm -hmm. mean, it's a retreat, though, just a minute. It's a retreat. Oh. Is that the first day of school? It is the first day of school. Oh. The 24th so. is, like, first day of in-service. So, yeah, okay. for either one, <laughs> it's going to be one of those days. <laughs> How about the 24th? I, mean, I think we have enough time that we should be able to find, out, find another day. We can find another day. That I could, is an excluding. Right. We can yeah. also look the Wednesday, the... For the 14th of September. I don't think we looked that far ahead. It would be better for all of us to be here. Either. Yeah, I, I think I think it's all like a rough. Yeah. 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 We need everybody. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Do, do we want to... Let me look at the 14th. Okay. All right, and then if, if that's open, we can try to confirm through email with all of you. Okay, I'd be tentative September 14th. Can we say if it's the 14th is available that everybody can do yeah. it? I can so do that we just look at? Right. Yeah, yeah. Later, um, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, okay. So it looks like 14th works. Okay, it okay. works. Yeah. Yeah. works <laughs> we'll you can check it out with Grant. Okay. All right, thank you for that, thank folks. You. All right, we're under item eight, new business. Under new business, we have a flag raising request. It's in our packet, and it's um, related to the Black Lives Matter flag for the next school year, and it's action item. So can I have a motion to approve the request for discussion, please? So I'll make a vote. I'll second. Thanks, I think that was Jack and Susan, thank you. Okay, discussion. Um, I have a question in the sense that at the last meeting, and it's in the minutes, Nicole Schubert said that uh, there were other groups that were also interested in raising flags. Uh, and someone mentioned one specific, specific group, and her comment was kind of now that we got the Black Lives Matter flag, I can hang that one out my window. And my question is, and I'm sure that was just off the cuff, are other requests going to be treated as seriously as this particular one was? And is this person, we say it's student driven and I understand that, but it's all from this justice committee. Are they looking at and actually listening to and will they formulate requests for other groups? I am more than happy to speak on that. Um, I am a part of the group. There has been a lot of discussion about other requests. Um, and the, the group is open to anybody that would like to come in. Um, we have it publicly announced when we have our meetings, who wants to join, if anybody wants to come. Um, it's very open. There's also um, a lot of other clubs that can be made if, if it's kind of open to the students, honestly, that if they would like to send out like Google Forms like our club did, then I think they're more than welcome to. Um, I think, as you can see in the data in the, in the back of the sheet, we, we really pressed for a student voice and we got all the numbers of, the, of about, I think, 300 kids. Mm -hmm. So I think it's open if, if another group wants to, they, they more than, they can. This are, is, are they encouraged to as well? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. of course. I mean, it, it's hard, <laughs> it's definitely hard thinking about having to do the process over again. I think we might, we have a better start at doing it, like say the pride flag for um, the month of June, which is kind of, if we were to do it next year, we would we would have to submit um, 
not only a request to the board, but to the entire school to make sure it's what students want. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I, are we saying that? So here's my thing. So are we saying that um, a group of kids? Because I, I don't see like, oh, it needs to be a certain size. If ten kids come to you and say, "This is the flag we want," is that going to be a well? Let's put it out to the kids to see, or is that going to be, oh, you guys want it? Oh, okay, like we can petition for it because I think that's important too. To make sure if we're if we're hearing if kids are coming to you it's i don't i don't necessarily think it matters how big the size i think if if they're sharing i want the pride flag in the month of june i think it's important that we say we hear you and if you want that flag then petition you know the school board and go from there i i do understand that thinking about the policies is I'm not quite sure what it was written but that that the entire student body wants that. I'm not sure if that's written in the policy or not. Um, no, it's not. It's not. The policy is that a group of students can bring. I'd have to quote it exactly, so I'm not. I don't have it up in front of me. Uh, and it may be right on there. Yeah, in that piece for you. But for I know they, for it, demonstrating student reports. No, it, so it, it's um. A flag must come from student groups. Um, the, it must have an. Uh, it must match the current district mission goals right. and learning yeah. outcomes. Yeah. Not harm any students. Yeah. I I think that we should empower students to to do that, and if that's what they want, and the group is can can facilitate that, then we're we're more than happy to have any students come in and, and speak with us and have um, action. Thank you. I mean, just say I love having you here. I think it's <laughs> great. And it doesn't need to come through the BFA Social Justice Club. No, no. it could come through it's any group. Right. That's yeah. 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 what we, you were saying that earlier. Yeah. Not just social, it could be any group. Yeah. But who would they go through? I guess would they come yeah. here? They would come they here. Yeah. Petition. Yeah. Petition it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. These for, and these forms are available through the principal. Yeah, yeah. I, I know the principals would know how to. Get, they're right. really through the superintendent's office, but the principal would say, "Hey." Yeah, and I think another thing is if students would want to come to the, the student reps, um, mm -hmm. we, can, we can make that happen really quickly now, um, which is, I think is really great. Okay, okay so the, the item that we have before us is the request for the Black Lives Matter flag for the next school year. Yes. You ready to take that vote? I actually have a question real quick. Yes, if, like, if another group came, right, and wanted to put up a flag. I, I don't know what it would be, but let's say in November or something, or December or something, someone came and wanted to put up a flag. How, how set are we on this? Because this does say from this day to the end. So my question is how set, can, can we just so be you, like, okay, yeah, I will we'll leave your policy and I should have it in front of me and ready, but I don't. Allows you to modify the time at any point. So we're not necessarily agreeing to the time period. We're just saying we're going to put it up, and then we'll decide. Okay, it allows you as a board to do the time frame. So if someone comes anymore. up, we can then say, okay, now it's their turn, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Unless the board elects a different time frame. Right, right, okay. right. right. Okay. So but we can do that post, like, you post. Can, you can do that post, okay. I think, right. for the way your policy is written. All right, I just mm -hmm. wanted to make sure. Okay, we ready to vote now? Thank you. Yep. Yes. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It does say for the school year of 20. 22 to 2020. This does. Yes. Yeah. So the question is if the policy says we have the discretion to change the time period, can we come back and say we have the discretion to, to take to take something down after the end of a school year? That's what I believe. You have the two policy. there are two lines there. It has that in the policy and that you can modify the timeline at any point. Okay, I, okay, I'm not, I'm not confident on the second piece. Yeah. Out. So can we pull that up yep. before we let's, take let's a vote? Do that. Then, let's do that. Give me a minute and I'll pull it up. I think I have it. Yeah, on the version. I think the other, hopefully non-issue, is that, and I, uh, this does not have to be a single, single, <laughs> flag. That's, that's very, you're, you're so true, we, true. we've. I think we are really focused, heavily focused on mm -hmm. the fact that there can only be one flag raised. And if you go around and you look at other schools, 
schools have multiple flags raised, That's not right. just one. So I think that we need to move on from that piece. I'm going to recommend that we move on from that piece. I don't think it has to be exclusionary. I think we figure out a way that to erect another flag. Sorry, I'm just having some connection. So there goes. some of these things that are being brought up, I think they're sort of the, we cross those bridges when we get to that. Exactly. Um, you know, like, do we erect another flagpole? Uh, do we allow for other we flags? We have multiple flags on a single pole. Probably can. We can. It's possible. Sorry, my computer's just being slow. I think we're just maxing out the internet here. I don't think it's everybody's way. I don't think it's everybody's way. Here we go. Right uh, it's coming. That's right. In reality, according to the policy, we could strike on this request. This is a request to put the flag back up in all school districts for the duration of. The fact that if we approve it, according to the policy, it goes up on that date and it comes down at our discretion. So if we simply remove that line, then we've solved our issue of yes. having to ask them to take something down and then saying you said I could have it up all year. The exact language is the flag shall remain on the school flagpole through the end of the school year and shall then be removed unless the board elects a different time frame. That's right. right. Okay. So I think we're, I think we're, I think yeah. we can do that. Yeah. We can change it. Okay. So, Thank you, all Roger. in favor of um, approving the request for the Black Lives Matter flag as presented, signify by saying aye. 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 Any negatives? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is item 8B. And this is a policy um, that is being presented for a first reading. It's the policy on policies, policy on the adoption <laughs> of policies. Um, on policy awesome. on policy. And um, we actually have a policy at the hospital called policy on policy. Oh. So I'm so extrapolating from that. <laughs> um, um, so I need a motion to adopt the policy. Uh, <laughs> I need a motion to move the adoption of policies to a second reading. So moved. There's a mo I think I heard a so moved in a second. There were two down at the end. Okay, so let's discuss this. One of the things that came up at our last meeting is that we don't really have a concrete process for um, our adoption of policies. Bill went back and looked at minutes from previous meetings over several years and determined that we have a practice that we've been following pretty well, but we don't really have a defined process. So um, it's caused some confusion for me because I'm used to the first reading, second reading post. Some people go for first reading, second reading, it's ready. So this explains a process and it goes up to, I think you can even have a fifth reading. I think um, if you read that policy through, by the time you've gotten to that place, you probably need to rewrite your policy because you got some problems. <laughs> But anyway, um, it does describe the process in quite a bit of detail and would give us some parameters for how to um, do business. So um, any discussion related to the adoption of the policies policy? <laughs> we definitely need to rename that policy. <laughs> I like policy it. adoption is what it is. Policy adoption. So if after the second reading, um, it's considered dead. It can be brought forward the following year for a policy. Not that I think any policy that's dead can be brought forward again anytime. Okay. As long as there's yep. uh, interest. There, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a first reading. Yep. You're going to have a second reading. And that warrants it for approval. Yep. The second reading warrants it for approval. The second reading warrants it for approval. And those meetings have can be same two meetings in the month, right? They could be, yeah. We so need to have, make sure we have 10 days. You have to have a 10-day warning. Yeah. 
So you got to turn that around pretty quickly for the first meeting and the second meeting of the month because you only have 14 days to make that all happen. That is not our practice so far. So for us, we would probably have to skip a meeting. I, I think we can pro we can get it out for public comment. It's pretty easy to do unless there's major revisions coming out of the first reading. Okay. Well, that's something to consider. And if you read the um, policy, it talks about the minor changes are really minor, like you know, like grammatical and S's and stuff. Not like what we call minor changes. I really need a little bit more than minor, but we made them at some time in the past. So. Are we ready to vote on the uh, policy adoption policy to move it to a second reading? All in favor of moving that policy to a second reading signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries to a second reading. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, next item on the agenda is other business. We have the warrant. Uh, we no, skip one. 8C. 8C. Why do I not have the same agenda here? 8C. Special education policy. Okay, I know nothing here. Um, D07 special education policy first reading attachment 8C. Administration seeks to move the special education policy to a second reading. So I need a motion to move the special education policy to a second reading. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, we're up for discussion. I can introduce if you'd like. Yes, because I'm It's okay. not aware uh, of what I'm doing. Um, this policy is required by statute that we have a policy saying that we're gonna follow all federal and state laws and regulations for providing a free and appropriate public education and that we follow all those laws and regulations for special education and that we follow the Vermont Special Education Procedures and Practices Manual. This is a double duty policy to law and regulation, but when we're audited for our special education, they're gonna be looking for this policy and we learned that this past fall. So all districts in Vermont need to adopt this policy that's the model <coughs> School Board Association and the Agency of Education. So this is one of those required as worded. Okay. Any discussion? Beyond that? Sort of a requirement. So all in favor of the special education policy moving to a second reading, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Any abstention? Motion carries. Thank you. Am I up to item nine? <laughs> no, I know. Yes. You are. I yes. printed my uh, agenda too soon, I guess. Um, nine is other business warrants. Administration seeks a motion to approve the warrants, acknowledging that passage of this motion will act as authorization and signature of any individual board members participating remotely. Can I have that motion, please? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Katie. Mm -hmm. Any discussion on the warrants? Hearing none, all in favor of the warrant of uh, the motion as noted, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Is the uh, warrant going around for signature? Next item on the agenda is eight, uh, 9B, it's the superintendent's report. Yes. Um, so I wanted to just talk a little bit about the tragic events in Texas and how those affect um, the schools here in Maple Run. Uh, I, think, I think I can say for the leadership team at least, but I think I can say for most of us in the education community, our hearts go out to not only Texas, but there have been many other schools. There have been 17 schools, I think I've got that number right, that have had uh, student deaths due to gun violence. I may have that number wrong, but for some reason that's sticking in my head. Um, it was tragic what happened there, and there, we do not, I would want to caution us what we've been taught by um, Rob Evans, the Vermont 
liaison that helps with safety and school safety is don't jump to the conclusion of what you're hearing through the media. Let it get debriefed through the police officer, through the different agencies, and we will hear exactly what did happen there. And that will be reviewed, as you can all imagine. Um, it, our hearts want to go to that and jump to what we hear on the news, but we're not going to get all of the information. And there may be some good information that comes out of after action reviews to really tell us what actually did happen. Um, and I'm not saying they're getting it wrong. It's just they to go through, it'll be about a year or two. To, when an event like this happens, it takes about a year or two for it to be debriefed, information processed, and then affect school safety procedures. I did want to remind all of you that um, we do take the safety very uh, seriously here in Maple Run. I actually was um, pleasantly surprised when I arrived at how to the level at which this school district does take safety for our students. Um, it's a very, it's a, like, the highest level I can say in my career. Um, you have a district-wide safety committee that's supported by public, our public safety and our district liaison officer. Um, and until we hit the pandemic, uh, there were some very detailed drills, including all school evacuations and relocations to a new area with students. Um, I never experienced something to that level of detail in my 25 plus years of education. Uh, since we've been in the pandemic, the Agency of Education has um, allowed schools to do an once a year do an evacuation drill and then Talk, have talk through sessions with the students about lockdown and uh, secure in place drills. Those have happened uh, within Maple Run to, from what I'm assured, um, across the system. But we have restarted our safety committee this year. It didn't really, we didn't have many meetings of it last year. And I know that they've been charting new to get us back to some of the uh, practices that we had prior to. I, one of the first things they advise us is not to talk publicly or give out public information about how we conduct our safety procedures because that's one of the first uh, security issues in being safe is you don't want people that might potentially come into a school to know how you do your work. So um, I, that's why I'm being vague, um, but I want to assure you that it's taken very seriously. There's usually at least one or two members from every school um, and I know that our facilities uh, directors at each school, each campus are doing a great job of making sure we're up to date with alarm systems. I, I can tell you that, you know, I think you may remember from the BFA connector, we're replacing all the alarms and sprinkling all BFA. Uh, hopefully next meeting I'll be bringing you as an SR update for construction, some of what that's doing for some of our other systems. Um, I'm glad to take any questions, but I kind of left it to that level. Okay. So I have for my superintendent's report. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda is um, we have a student board representative report. Leah. Yes. Well, I'm really grateful that I'm here. I'm so excited to finally be able to officially be on the board. <laughs> um, I'm really excited for the group, actually. Um, I am very hopeful that next year it will be in full swing and we'll have everything kind of set in stone. Um, we're working on doing more um, procedure and making that look exactly how we want to, to make it really flow and solidify that um, as a group. So for the future students that come, um, We'll have this like continue up on through. Um, so I'm really grateful that I'm here and be able to be a part of that. Um, I think all the other students um, that weren't able to join me are also very, very excited. Um, and hopefully next year it'll be a lot more um, participation. So thank you for allowing me to be here today. Thank you. Thanks, Leo. So did she get a name tag, right? Sure, we're going to get name tags. We have the five students. We have name tags. We get the right ones when they're here. I do want to um, thank you, Leah, publicly in this meeting. I know I said it to you this morning, but Leah did a tremendous job with two of her peers at the Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. She had a very eloquent speech. So I do appreciate that. Perfect. Next item is board announcements. 
Yes, sir. So just to tag off of what Silver says, I, I watched the BFA. I saw the video of the BFA um, ceremony today. It was really nice. You did a wonderful job. Leah. Thank you for that. Uh, it was really pretty and beautiful. It was a beautiful moment, I think. And I, uh, I had the opportunity to go to city school. Um, it was not only was the ceremony today, but it's also stewardship day there. Um, Joan greeted me warmly. She gave me a shirt, which was very, like a super nice shirt. It's a very nice shirt. Um, and you know, I, uh, I got to speak with Matthew Allen, who, by the way, I saw him last week. Um, there was a little kid having a really bad day and he was just like him and another teacher were just on point with like helping this kid. He was like little and he was just like, it was just a day for him. So it was, uh, I just wanted to say that publicly that, uh, that, that event was really great. Um, but today, I, I really want to uh, say that for me, the the, the height of the day was um, Stacy Rulo, who um, it was raining, and she literally sat on the ground with an umbrella over the speaker, um, so that the kids could say their stuff and the speaker wouldn't get wet. And it's if you want to know what like education is and what educators do every day, it's like that little thing of sitting on the ground on a wet, rainy day, holding an umbrella over a speaker so that kids could be heard. It was like. It was just one of those things that really inspires a whole lot of pride. And for all of us, we should just really be really proud that we have educators like that doing daily stuff. So just want to thank City School in general for that. It was really great. Thanks, Ryan. Anyone else have any board announcements? OK, hearing none, um, we have listed um, agenda items for future meeting, I think. Uh, setting goals for future meetings and the other topics that we want to add right now. Hearing none, we have no need for executive session. Is there any other business that needs to come before the board? Hearing none, we are adjourned. It is 742.